Hey everybody, what's going on? It is DM Dave here. I am excited to work on a little bit of a new project today. Um, a awesome guy in the business who, if you don't know about yet, Dyson Logos, recently came out and was complaining and lamenting on Facebook how um, he's got this really big map that nobody's done anything with. So I decided to... Uh, accept the challenge. Uh, I figured this would be a, probably a pretty good video to show you how to number a uh, dungeon map, which uh, can sometimes be kind of intimidating, especially when you've got a giant map like this guy right here. This this is Dyson's Deep Halls. It's part of his commercial license agreement. And as you can see, it's huge. I'm not even sure how many rooms there are yet. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to number this guy, uh, starting from one and going all to however many <laughs> and the the kind of the best way to do it that kind of goes with the way that um that and your players and your characters end up going um if you aren't already subscribed go ahead and hit the subscribe button here and uh, please like this uh help me get a few more views and and thanks so much for your time all right so here's this big map we got this off of uh dyson's website um I believe it's DysonLogos.com or blog.dysonlogos.com. Let's see, Dice. Yeah, DysonLogos.blog. It is part of his uh, commercial maps, which if you go on there, he offers a ton of commercial maps. Make sure you understand the agreement and make sure that you end up sharing his content. But if you want to be a content creator like me and you're having trouble finding um, good maps to use and you don't have the time to draw your maps like yourself, like I don't have time to draw maps and personally I prefer to to fill in other people's stuff this is a great resource because it's got everything from like towns to regional maps to keeps to dungeons of all sorts of flavors I'm scrolling down right now to see if I could find the map in question and you can see he's got a huge list I think he's got something like a hundred thirty maybe even two hundred I don't know 300 maps. Uh, you can also buy them on drive through RPG, which is kind of an easier way to get them. And it'll all go into, um, you'll end up getting a zip file, which is really convenient. I've done that a couple times just to make life easier. Um, I wonder if it's by design. Is it by design, Dyson? <laughs> Let's see if we can find this uh, here. All right, there you go. Mavericks Challenge 2, Deepalls. He was recently commenting how he made this back in 2017. Um, it's been become a shower curtain. <laughs> it's been on the front of books. Other people have used it in material, but it's never been stocked. So, uh, well, challenge accepted, Dyson. I'm going to see if I can't stock this bad boy and uh, make something out of it. I've already downloaded it, so I went just to click to the image. And he's got a pretty high-def image here. I've saved it, and then I'm going to start stocking it. So, when stocking... Um, usually what you want to do is you want to start with the location that um, the characters in the adventure are most likely to come in. Uh, we've got a few different opportunities for it, but it really it's going to depend on your story and where you want to go. And honestly, there might be different ways of doing it. Plus, what's cool about this map, as you can see, is it has multiple layers to it. Um, so it has, you can see, this is a, a layer here. It's like above this one below it. And if you have any confusion as to which layer goes over which, Dyson has actually been cool enough to include a color-coded version, which, um, oh, that's not the color-coded version. <laughs> uh, Dyson has been cool enough to include a color-coded version, which goes from, uh, I believe, warm colors being the uppermost and cool colors being the lowermost layer. So you can see this entrance here is orange. This one goes a bit more and it's red and then it descends down to uh, the lower cool color end of the spectrum till it gets to the lowest layers, which is here in this uh, dark blue purple color. So that's kind of a nice way to help you visualize and uh, see it. I've done that with a few of his maps as well as Tim Harton's maps in the past to kind of help uh, people view it. So if you don't have something like this already set up, which he's nice enough to have this. Uh, you can get it set up this way. All right, so we've got a few different places that we can come into, and I'm going to point them out here. I'm going to put on a... Um, this is this is in Photoshop, so um, you're, you're going to need Photoshop to get it, but it's like, if you don't have Photoshop, uh, I highly recommend 
um, learning it, especially if you want to get into the content creation. Uh, it's pretty simple, uh, way easier than Adobe Illustrator and, and some of the other programs out there. But if you don't, don't worry. I mean, there's other like Canva and stuff like that, uh, pretty reasonably priced software. So what I'm going to do is I'm just adding an extra layer here with a little overlay and I've got my paintbrush tool on and I'm going to just highlight the areas where, um, actually I'll do multiply or no, I think it's overlays the one I want. That's like a Sharpie. Um, we've got, oop, maybe it is multiply. See, I'm not even an expert. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. So you can see, oh, you know what? It's on grayscale. That's why it's coming out lousy. Don't flatten. All the designers who I'm friends with out there watching me are probably making fun of me and my lack of skills. All right, so here we go. All right, so we got one entrance here. We've got another one here. Uh, looks like we got one up here. Um, so we're looking for staircases and ways in. Here's one that goes down. Uh, we get some rivers that go off screen. Usually I, I ignore those, but just for the sake of this experiment, I'm going to highlight them. And I think that's it. I think that's all that I'm seeing there in terms of um, entrances. Uh, the two that I like the best are going to be this guy here, which comes from the outside. I think that's really good. And then we got this guy here, which uh, comes from a source upstairs. But what I think, and then we've also got one, this goes downstairs. So I'm going to ignore this because that's usually just saying like, oh, wait, never mind. It goes down to this. Okay, so you can see where that secret door comes out. So we can we can forget about this one here. This isn't going to do us any, uh, any good. I'm going to forget about these rivers. This up here I think is cool, but I think it makes more sense as, a, as an egress that leads to uh, an expanded dungeon because it's going to be more or less on the same levels as the other stuff. So let's get rid of him. And it's going to come down between these two here. I really like this one up here. I think it's a nice starting point. It's easier to see visually if it's up there. So that's where we're going to end up starting our dungeon. Okay. So I'm going to zoom in on this guy here. And we're just going to make it, re we're going to make this pretty simple. I'm going to start with a. Um, Number one, uh, I'm going to do it in the old Nodesto caps because that's the uh, Modesto caps because that's the, the official Watsi font makes it look nice and official. And that's number one. So we've got like an outside here. Looks like someone's tunneled in and found the original area here. Dyson's got a little text block for what this adventure is, but I'm going to, for the sake of this, I'm going to ignore kind of that and kind of build out our own story. I think technically I'm not allowed to use this hooks anyways, but you know, I see they're here or there. Okay. So this is going to be our first spot here. Spot number one. And then we are going to build out from there in the most likely areas. Um, I would say next up is going to be probably obviously this long hallway since we have to go into it to get started. Now we could count this as maybe part of one. We can number it separately. It really just depends on what you want to do with it and how important that you want to make it. I think if anything, we would go one A here and then call this a B. So sometimes when you have related areas, instead of numbering each one, and you're totally free to do that, sometimes you can give them A and B, because um, the way I think of it is this, if you can perceive what's going on in an, an adjacent area, but it has different elements which require um, the characters to, to put a different level of attention to, like say you have um, like a room with a balcony, right? You can make the, the bottom floor one, a, and then you can make the balcony going around it. B, you can see what's going up there, but if you really want to investigate it and check it out, you need, you need to also go to the section B. That's not, you don't have to do it that way, but I find that a lot of like modern design um, tends to do that. And ultimately it ends up, you kind of having to think about what you're going to be doing with this in advance. I have no idea what I'm going to do with this for now. So I'm going to call, I'm just going to go straight up and um, I'm going to call the outside section one. And then this is going to be a little weird. I'm actually going to call this 2B, and this will be 2A over here. I can start it with a 2, but I'm just going to do it the short way. So there's lots of different ways to number it. Um, this is kind of the way that I like to do it, just because I know like 2A two, two 
A is going to be the first thing they see, and then two Bs here. The only reason I put the two here is because there's a little bit more room, and it's a little bit more legible. Uh, we call... Okay, so here's my school of thought, and this is kind of an old school way of thinking, is generally... When you enter a dungeon, if you want to raster it, meaning you want to like scan the whole thing and make sure you get everything so you don't miss anything, you know, it's an actual dungeon crawl and not just like a get in, get out adventure. You're going to want to number it um, based on an old school way of thought called follow the left wall. Uh, sometimes people do follow the right wall, but I think follow the left wall is kind of a, a better concept because it's going to make you go clockwise through the dungeon. So if we start here and this is our left wall, it follows us down to here. Now, the only time we would break from this is if there was kind of like an island unto itself. So we see here we've got this little pentagonal room looking like a Monopoly house piece with a secret door. That's going to kind of be floating out into an island to itself. So I'm going to write it like there's no other way to it either. So right away, we're going to call this uh, number three. Okay, so we've got one, two, A and B. And then I'll probably call um, I'll probably call the rest of this area down here, uh, maybe this landing or something. You know what? I'm thinking we'll call that four later or whatever number comes next. We're gonna call this guy here three because it sits by itself, and then we're gonna start going down. So next we're gonna be going through this door here. Enters into this room. Let's go ahead and call this four. Um, I'm gonna we're following the left wall. So here's the thing again, like if we followed the left wall, it would go out this way and we would end up forgetting these rooms, but these rooms exist by themselves. So let's number them. Um, we'll call this five. We'll call you number six. Okay. Make sure we got all of our right numbers. We'll call this room number seven. The only reason I did these separate instead of a 4A and a 4B is I see this as being like a totally separate chamber and not so much affected by what's here. Um, that might change in the future, but for now, this is how we're going to do it. All right, we're going to call this 7. Now, when it gets over to here, I'm going to call this 8A and B. Uh, we're going to get down to here. I'm going to do the same number in convention I did with the twos here. This first part will be an A because there's like a little alcove that might have something of interest. But the m main chamber, 9B, is where they're going to hit first. Uh, down here, we're going to call this 10. Um, and let's see. we got this river that runs through it. Let's go ahead and number that now because that's going to be a major passage going through it. So if we scroll up, we can see that this passage goes around. It hits all kinds of interesting areas, so it's, it's a different way to go through the dungeon. Granted, you know, it's a little bit, it's not as, like, uh, direct, so, um, you know, it, it, whether or not they use it is up to them. But we still, we don't want to limit our our um, characters and what they can do. Plus, it's got a nice little egress that comes off here. I imagine it flowing, mm, uh, hard to say which way it flows. Really depends on the mountain. Like, water, water is going to flow away from the mountain towards the coast, you know, and always go down. So, it really just depends on where it's coming from so maybe we'll come back like worrying about the flow right now is not that big a deal right now we're just worrying about number all right so that is gonna be 11 um and again we could easily call this like 10a and 10b but since this path is going to connect to so many different areas likely i'm going to go back through and like number like this section here for example will be 11 especially if it all kinds of shares the same general features as this so when you're numbering rooms you need to consider it, if if this is all one big river this river here um is this section similar enough to this section where they can share the same number or should i give them different numbers and that's kind of what you got to think about with that and you can see there's some other interesting things like there's this little lake here but we're not there yet um we're just going to follow the logic of uh, Dyson's layout. All right, so we got 12. This room's going to be 13. Uh, still, you can see we're still following the wall. So uh, let's let's track backtrack a little bit. All right, so left wall, left wall, left wall, left wall, left wall, left wall. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, so we're going to call this 14. This will be 15. All right, and 
other than the waterway, it doesn't look like there's any way to get to this section over here. So then this becomes a question, do we want the characters to follow the waterway, make it easy? I'm going to vote no. I'm going to make it kind of a secondary path. So this section is going to be more or less closed off to numbering for now. Now keep in mind, you're free to number it however you want. But um, when I go back and I start stocking this, I want to make sure that I'm... Um, you know, going with the logic of the way that I want characters to go in the adventure. Okay. Alrighty. So we've got, let's, we're going all the way back because we filled up everything here. We're at back at 2B. Um, let's see where we got to go next. Uh, we got this section up here and that kind of goes different places. Uh, we could start numbering it that way. We could go down. Let's go interesting lots of interesting designs here so this is a tricky one really like again it just becomes with the logic of the players which way are they going to go i'm going to vote they're going to go this way so we were at i believe 14 was the last number yeah so we're going to have to call this guy 15 for this hallway now corridors and passageways if they don't have any features within them that are different than the general features of the dungeon you can just leave them blank because um, it, if they can be affected by, so a good way to write your adventures is to start off with general features, um, basic stuff like what are the stone, uh, what, what's the um, floor, walls, and ceiling made out of, um, what is uh, um, your uh, um, doors made out of, what kind of random encounters are, are there kind of any weird elements that the DM should know about, things like that. If if an area like a closet or like this little dude out here doesn't really have anything that stands out, then number it. I would say too with any kind of and that you can do that with quarters and like really small rooms. So like a like a tiny closet. Like you, you can see there's a little closet here. Might not be worth putting any number into it if there's nothing in there. Um Chambers, though, I would always number because if you leave out a number for a chamber, people are going to be like, like if I, say, like this was just addressed by general features, I'd be like, well, what's in there? Why isn't there anything listed? And it just gets confusing. So you kind of have to like balance between, as a writer of these modules, you have to balance between um, what information is necessary and what information is not. And you don't want to do like too much, you don't want to do too little. So it's just kind of a balance. It just comes with practice. Okay. Um, all right. So actually, Let's just leave this one blank as a um, point of order. Uh, we got two areas here that are standalone. They don't have any egresses. So let's go ahead and call this 15. We'll call this guy 16. Um, and they could go, it could go either way. I'd honestly, if we're doing the left wall, we'll call him 15. We'll call this one 16. Go back around. This area here will be 17. It's got kind of this trippy um like staircase that descends down and then has a bridge over top of the landing here and then continues it looks like they got a couple alcoves cut into there too so in this instance we might want to um start giving it some numbers on its own so we'll, we'll call this b here so 17a and then the stairs go down and you got b in these alcoves Again, we've got two areas here that are kind of on their own. So we'll call this guy 18. Oh, left wall, left wall. We'll call this guy 18 because we'd be following this wall. And we'll call this one 19. A lot of rooms here. So we're almost into the 20s already. Um, every room in D&D, &D, you can expect, depending on how length of your writing is um, probably about, I don't know, 250 to 500 words. Anything beyond that, you know, it should be really important, but you typically don't need much more than that. Uh, fifth edition does a really good job of kind of keeping things uh, nice and neat and clean with its uh, design and being like, not giving like too much overwhelming information. All right, so 17A, 17B, uh, we got some interesting alcoves here. Might be worth typing something in there. I think this hall kind of, just by the shape of it and kind of the importance of it, might warrant its own numbering. So let's do this. Let's give this, let's make this 20B. 
actually we'll make it to make it even more confused we'll call it 20 C and then this will be 20 B um, 20 A I think that's cool um, and we might even go a little bit further with that but this in other words this this chamber and the this hallway this stretch of hallway at least are somehow going to be related Ooh, how that is I don't know but this will like I'll, this is kind of like me leaving mental notes for myself if you if you have if you want to be like a little bit more detailed and organized and you kind of want to plan stuff out I mean if you're working in Photoshop the cool thing is that you can always just um, oh, I'll show you what I did here uh, you can always just um, leave notes on here yourself and just delete the layers I mean it's Photoshop you have the ability to change it any way you want and keep in mind like I'm just placing the numbers for now all right, so what I'm doing is I'm going to group all these guys together. That'll be valuable for later on if I want to like add a stroke around all of them or something so they stand out a little bit more or, you know, just change their color or something so they so they stand out. I, I like Dyson's nice stark black and white maps. And since this is a commercial map, which means I can write it and put it in a broadsword, um, it's probably best to leave it in that grayscale. All right, so we've got room 20. B and A, uh, let's see here, it's going to double back on here, let's, um, you know what, we're going to call this 2C, I wonder if we should almost at that point, yeah, kind of this grand hall, so that'll be 2A, 2B, 2C, um, I mean we could leave the 2 off, but uh, we'll call it Let's make something in this little closet here. So we'll make that important. Um, we see that we've got some pathways coming out and doubling back. Um, so that might be worth doing before we get to here. We've pretty much already covered this. I would say, see again, we're, we're stuck with like, oh, how do I number it? Uh, let's just go ahead and number these. We'll call you 21, call you 22. And we'll get back to this guy over here once we get further down our main hall. Um, got this long hallway here. Let's just leave that alone. I don't think that's worth numbering up. Kind of like I did with uh, this one here. You know, if it's just a corridor. I mean, that's a, a random encounter machine right there. Oh, on uh, box sizes. Uh, Dyson tends to... Dyson, a lot of old school guys tend to go one square equals 10 feet. If you ask Dyson what his scale is, he's gonna give you kind of like a kind of answer. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it can be anything you want, but I, I like the whole tense, uh, one square equals 10 feet because it does make um, does make combat more interesting, especially when, when you have a game where it's like, it's difficult terrain to move through your own buddies and like you can't go through things. This gives a little bit more tact, like a, a, a 10 foot wide hallway is better than a five foot wide hallway because otherwise they end up like the Sims and like bumping into each other and shrugging. They don't know what's going on. Uh, let's see. All right, so we got this crazy hallway that goes underneath and then over top and then back around and reconnects with itself. I say we just call this whole thing um, one whole section. So another thing that you can do with the numbering things is um, ecologies and related rooms. Like, say um, a group of goblins live somewhere here in the dungeon and they've st staked a claim on like a clump of rooms then you can give those all the same letters and that way you can refer to like say i could say section 23 is goblin layer and then a is barracks b is the king's layer and c is their treasury and those are all related and that's kind of a good way for like a, um I, you see this like in a in really big dungeon books like dungeon of the mad mage a lot where it just helps you organize in your head what this like group of, of rooms is supposed to be instead of existing because when you're just looking at a black and white image like this if you see right off the top you know that you have like a, a 17 a and b they're probably connected like a 20 c b and a are probably connected and then we just detail what's in 20 and then the other places and uh go from there so anyways but yeah we could like say like 20 is uh guard patrol a is where we have two animated suits of armor, you know, send, or A and B, um, and then 20C is like something else. And then the rest of the stuff isn't really related to that. So again, numbering is, it's an art and a science. Um, 
the, the biggest thing is, is just trying to make it as logical as possible. And when you go to write the adventure, you want to make sure that um, it, it flows easy, especially when reading. And it's, it's, it's a very important part of information architecture, which um, it's just kind of a fancy way of saying like how you organize the, the data and the content so that it's uh, uh, readable. So, um, okay. So back to what I was talking about, you're going to go in here and here, we're going to call this 23A. This will be uh, 23B. Okay. So we got 23A, 23B are connected. Uh, going back out in the hall, the next logical area is going to be this section here, but again, that's down there. So let's go ahead and call, we'll call you to D. Um, which is a huge section of hallway here. See if there's any interesting landmarks that really separate this hall. One thing I like that Tim Harton does with some of his maps is if there was like a set of double doors or like a big statue somewhere, he might target that. Now this is a Dyson map. This is a Tim Harton map, but he might also label that too as being its own separate thing, especially if there's a lot of important information on it. Um, really with, with modern design, like if you go back to second and first edition, you just got these huge like blocks of text and it's really hard to read and figure out. Like I, I love running old stuff because it's wacky and weird, but man, it's a nightmare to, to read through. But what they've really done a good job of is using more blog style writing uh, where you've got, you know, different headlines, you know, uh, um, typically in D&D, &D, it's you have your H1 tag, which would be your chapter header. Um, H2s, which will be like the bigger letters. Um that, that kind of head up the different sections. Um, and then your H3s are the ones with the underline. Um, H4 will be typically the smaller, thinner one. So kind of like how they number like spells and things like that. And then H5 is usually only reserved for the titles of tables. Um, so then they have bullet points and then they also have like bold italicies size. So all this stuff's really important to know. And it all makes, trust me, it all makes sense once you've watched a million of my videos and kind of understand like my thought process and how like how writing goes, like understanding this kind of stuff is important because you want to be able to get information to the uh, reader and the, who's going to be your dungeon master so that they can quickly, um, one, understand what they're supposed to know before running an adventure without having to read every single little word like you did in first edition. And two, um, if they're just running it off the cuff, like they can quickly like go to the number that they need, like scan it like real quick and be like, okay, so in this room you've got da 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 da. So anyways, TLDR, this stuff's important. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like see, we got these big double doors here. It might be worth noting those. So instead of just noting those, let's do this. I'm gonna call this 2D and I'm gonna go ahead and give this big section over here called 2A. This is a huge room. You know, we're dealing with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So 130 feet across. This is really important because the maximum dark vision range for most creature is 120 feet. So if this room is totally dark with no lights on it, not even a, a drow can be standing right here and he could have no idea that this room even exists. So be cognizant of stuff like that too, especially when you're dealing with huge rooms, because just like this, people up here, they ain't got any idea what's going on down here and vice versa. All right, so we have completed our main hall here. We've kept up the two numbering scheme from one to A, B, you know, just to make it legible. Let's just call it two A. Um, I might go back and add the rest of the numbers too. Eh, 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 eh. Okay. Um, where do we want to go next? All right, so let's go back to, we've done this guy, we've done our great hall. It's totally done. Let's go, we've got this hallway here. I'm fine with it just being its own thing. We're gonna to go to this area next. I think we're in 24 now. Um, 20. This has this kind of like this cool stairway. So let's call this uh, 24A. We got um, kind of a, an interesting pillar here, so maybe we'll call that B. And then finally we have this uh, two-way staircase that goes up, which we're gonna call C. Also, there's a door there too, so here. Actually, let's do this. Uh, left wall, one goes up, one goes down, down, up. 
Uh, if you're not familiar with staircases in old school art, if they look like this, you, 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 that goes down, and then it goes up. So that's how you can tell which way is up and down, but they're just staircases. All right, so 24, uh, left wall, left wall, left wall, left wall, left wall. Let's see how far away. Okay, that's going pretty far away. So, and we can see this dead ends up here. So let's go ahead and start calling this 25. We'll call you 26. And finally, we'll call this guy 27, or gal, or binary pal. Um, so some pretty cool stuff going on here. We got these alcoves to your two, but I think these rooms aren't big enough to warrant like multiple, you know, A's and B's here. If we wanted to have like a really detailed section here and then like this was really detailed too, maybe, or you know what, you wanted the focus to be separate. But for now, we're just gonna call it that and we can, it's easier to go back and add. That's another thing that makes doing this style nice. If you screw up and you forget a number, it's it's a lot easier just to call something 25A and 25B than it is to go back and have to redo all the numeration again. So <laughs> it's kind of a, a little 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 hack, if you will. Okay, so this is where it gets tricky here because you can see this thing is is this is where it kind of balloons to a mess. So let's let's zoom out real quick. My God, we're at 27 rooms and we haven't even done a fourth of it yet. Okay. <laughs> Uh, put on your helmet and your goggles because this is going to take a while. Uh, where to go next? All right, so we've followed our left wall as far as we can. Let's see if we can find some more dead ends. That'll be easy. Um, oh, we got, you know what? I totally missed this guy here. That's what I'm talking about. All right, so here's what happens when you make a mistake. You're going to have to backtrack. We're going to have to backtrack a little. And we can see that this one is kind of all over the place too. So, and those of you who are watching, you didn't say anything. I don't appreciate it, but I do appreciate you. Uh, let, you know what, let's just go. We haven't gotten that too far into this. So let's just get rid of these. Uh, we'll get rid of 24A. Uh, we'll leave, leave, leave the BCD convention. Um, 20. Really, we probably should have hit that one first. Nah, you know what? That's fine. All right, so 23. This is our real 24 here. Okay. I feel like I talked about this hall too. This is probably my fault. I'm sorry for blaming you. It's not your fault, baby. All right, uh, let's see. Rooms on themselves. Okay, so... You got these two little nubbins right here. So let's give each one of them its own number, um, kind of a smaller area. So we're gonna shrink down our font size a bit so it fits in there nicely. And we'll do the same for, all right, 25 and 26. So 20, uh, you know what? We'll call you 24. Because this is our left wall, right? Yep. 24, 25, 26. Um, let's go this way, 27. I'm not going to continue this way. It's secret passages. Uh, we might call this 28. Or we might call it B. Let's do that. We'll call this A. Call you B. And we can see that this comes from... <laughs> no. As a joke, <laughs> we see that this comes from another section of the dungeon. So this is the main way, and we will reconnect to that before um, once we get there. Um, okay, now we can go back here and make up for the mistakes that I made. Twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. 31. Okay, let's see if I've missed anything else, right? So let's pull back out. Uh, I got 26, 27, 28. I've got this passage here, and this kind of goes off into elsewhere. We will come back to that. 
because I see you going like this. Ugh, hard, hard to say, right? It all comes down to logic because we can see that logically this could be 28D and then it could go this way and through here back to there. You know what? Let's go ahead and do this. Let's do this. Um, I'm going to delete again. And this is the joy of numbering. Half the time you spend deleting stuff you already wrote. <laughs> Boop. Okay. We're going to call this one 28. This one will be 29. We will come back to this room. Go back up here. This will be 30. 31. 32, 33, okay, okay, so we've gone this way, we've gone this way, we've gone this way, uh, left wall, we're going to go down now, yep, 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 we don't want to get too far out though. So maybe we should come back to that. Especially it looks like, look, this is a dead end here. This goes out further, so we'll get back to it. This goes out further, so we might get back to it. Let's go ahead and start numbering this one to 34. Number this guy to 35. Um, a lot of cool stuff here. So you'll see I don't click my toolbar a lot. Um, I use, I've been using Photoshop for uh, 20 something years now. So I use a lot of hotkeys, but basically if you press the space bar, lets you, gives you your little hand tool. And then if you command or control, if you're a Windows user and your plus sign, it'll zoom in for you. All um, right, that's 34 and 35. Uh, Hmm. I almost kind of want to switch these guys' places with this run right here. This is where it gets tricky. Dyson's making things complicated. <laughs> Damn you, Dyson. You know, I really should dead end this first, shouldn't I? Let's see. If I'm following the left wall, I'm going this way. Let's go ahead. We'll call U31. Call this one 32. Call this one 33, 34 is going to be up here, oops, 35 is going to be up here, this will be 36, so what I've done is 30s through 31, 32, 33, and this will be our demarcation point, and then 34, 35, 36 up here. Um, there's seven, 38, something nice about numbering rooms that I really like. It's just kind of like, oh, it's peaceful. You know, it kind of uses up your brain and makes you think it's like putting a puzzle together, like doing Sudoku, I guess. All right. So there's my 39s. This guy's an easy 40 because he's by himself. Uh, we're not going to name the hall anything. Let's do 41 will be this blub. Remember this path, it goes back. Oh, you know what? Am I missing something? No, that goes over. Um, you know what? Just to make things even worse for all of you lovely folks, I'm going to call this 33. Whoops. All right, I want to start over. <laughs> and yeah, that's that's going to be pretty much the name of the game. Write some stuff, start over. Okay, so let's call, let's go ahead and get these numbers out the way. So where are we at? We're at 30 right now, I think. Where's 29? 29 is down there. We're going to call this 30, 31, because they live by themselves. Uh, I gotta get rid of 40 and 41. Then we're gonna call this section the 32s, which will go up to 33, 
34, 35, which might have to shrink later. Um, 36, 37, 38. There, I like that organization a little bit better because now it's putting all these in a nice little path because this is kind of a major passageway we got going on here. Uh, and I, I think uh, we end up putting 40 and 41 back where they were originally, so that kind of worked out. Um, that's good. I think that'll be our, our area of demarcation here because we can see this all kind of goes back to here. So that's kind of nice. And we'll, we'll walk our way back through that. Um, got this main hallway here, which looks like kind of a big deal. We probably don't have to number this. Might need to number this though. Yeah, we're going to call you 42. And then this guy will be, you know, let's call him 42. This will be 43. And again, you're never going to know which way your players go until they're actually moving. So if you don't get the numbers right, I mean, it happens. <laughs> like I, uh, I ran a vertex of Revelation the other night, the other one that I've been working on. And then uh, my players ended up going like, completely the opposite way than kind of what I guess they were. But they did follow the left wall. So I it's probably my fault for number, numbering right. Yeah, like you do. Uh, actually, look here. 39 goes to 40, and then 41. And then this connects, and the kind of dead ends back. So we should really be naming this 42. Let's call... Uh, this will be 43... And we'll call this area 44. No, this will be 44. And this will be 45. And again, we're hardly done. I probably won't finish the, the whole video here, but at least gives you a sense of, of what I'm doing and, and numbering it. Um, I gotta go make dinner in a minute, you know. It's a joy of being DM Dave. <laughs> I got to cook dinner too. <laughs> uh, let's see. 45. Should this be 45? No, because look at this. This is going to go. I want to keep that as straight as possible. So let's call you 44. And we'll call you 45. And then 45, I think, is good as just this long hallway might be worth like doubling that up again we'll leave this door alone for now but let's go 46 i think that's far enough away from the rest 47 and look here we came back to one of our areas um 48a and b look at that boom we're back back in the saddle again um we're good up there. We've we've kind of closed off all of our loose ends. We got this long guy here, but it looks like we're probably gonna be back. We're gonna be back over there soon, so let's keep it rolling. So 46, 47, 48. B uh we need a 49 here. Gonna keep following that left wall. 50. Where's this go? Well look, we're going down now. So I'm gonna cut off there. 51. Uh We'll cut off over here too, 52. What should we call these? Really need to come back to this other one before we go any further. Let's do that. So instead of calling this 49, we're gonna get rid of that. Let's, let's get this other major area. So this is a pretty major area. We last left off at 48, so 49, uh, 50, no, we'll call this 50. Do I got any, okay, so here's a couple of Lone Rangers over here, 51, 
52. Where does that go? That goes into kind of its own zone, huh? Poot, what to do, what to do? And it doesn't really connect back. Maybe, we, let's just, let's ignore this. Let's ignore this section now. No, because then it connects here. As, as one of my players would say. All right. So we're going to call you 49. We are going to call you. We'll name you later. In the meantime, this will be 50. So I'm going back and redoing it the <laughs> same way it was before 50, 51. Um, we'll call this 52, 53. Does that make sense? So left, 52. Yeah, we'll call this 53. We'll call you 54. We'll call you 55. I'm going to ignore this door for now, and we are going to go down. So we've closed off this whole section here and how it connects to all these rooms. And let's, you know what? Probably made it. All right. Executive decision. This is 52 now. <laughs> uh, this will be 53. This will be 54. It's a little bit backwards, but that's only because we're going to be going this way now into the uh, lower realm. So we'll call this 56, 57. We've got this big area here. So let's go ahead. And, and you can see, ooh, there's a little tunnel too. That's cool. Uh, 58A. B. Definitely want to mark this because that's got kind of something unusual there. Almost might even want to call it C. Yeah. And eh, now nah, we'll just call it B and I'll just make a note once I get to it. B, C. Yeah, that seems good. Uh, we're still following that left wall more or less. So, 59. Uh, A, B. We've got some dead ends over here, so let's fill these before we go up into this layer up here. Um, yeah. Players are probably going to go that way, but... And we can see it all dead ends and tracks back on there. So let's just, let's just do it the the left wall way. So 58A, B, um, 59A and B, I think are, are close enough together. We're going to start calling this, uh, eh, we won't name that one. Though I think this is probably a bridge that goes over, so that's kind of a cool feature. We'll call this uh, 60. So this is this will be A, this will be B. Um, this will be C down here. So section A goes down and then overlooks section C. Got this huge crazy room over here, which will be a nightmare once we start rolling in <laughs> roll 20. But, uh, I mean, it's, it's cool, so whatever. So we'll call you 61. And that'll be kind of be like everything over in that section there. Um, let's see if we're following the wall. Wall, 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 whoa. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll jump the track and go this way, 61, uh, 62, should be good there. Um, I think that makes sense. Yeah. Where are we? So left wall, left wall, left wall. We got this, uh, you know what? We should call this something too. We'll call this D. It's A, B. C, D. Um, let's see, left wall brought us here, went in here, back through here, up through here, going around here. There's a lake, uh, 63. We'll 
call you A. This will be B. Because we got that secret door, we want to make sure that we have a good understanding of where it is. Um, left wall, 64. 65, 66, go, left wall, left wall, left wall, left wall, 67, 68, 69, uh, there's a secret door there, but there's a regular entrance, so let's pretend like that doesn't exist for now. Um, you know what? I want to. That hallway is kind of cool, uh, and it's got a secret exit. We're gonna have to put something there, so we'll call that seventy. So I think that's probably worth noting. And remember, we can only you can always go back. It's a lot easier to go back and add in letters than it is to go back and add in um, or change the number schema because that'll take a lot of doing. So that's 71, 72 doubles back for us, 73, um, and then, you know what, this is, we'll call that 70, 71. Two, 73, 74, 75, so 69, 70, 71, 72, 70. 73. I don't know why it numbered like that. 74. All right, that's that section up there. I think we've got all of that section. We're going to break out here. Where are we now? I think we're at 75. We have a little nubbin by itself, so let's call him 76. And we're going to call this little cave 75B. Um, 76 tunnels down, reemerges there. Oh, you know what? We got this little here. Uh, we really should name that because, or should have given that something before. Um, we could call it 59C. So this is one of those instances where you like, do I throw a C in there? Yeah, let's do it because it's easier. <laughs> so that'll be our RC. And just just so we look like we just so we can tell people we know what we're doing, we'll call this D. So that maybe this will be a boss layer, and that's its treasure room. And that's why doing letters and numbers is so useful. <laughs> uh, this is so complicated because it's like I want this area here, and this is all you can see. This is all one area, but it's like this is sixty-one ish. <laughs> all right, so look at that. We got we ended up blowing through a ton of the numbers really quick there. All right, so now I think we can go back to this dude over here. Yeah, I think I think it's safe to go back that way. And you can see 11 is still winding down through um, through the dungeon. So that's we'll go ahead and give another 11 over there. So in case people are lost, they know what's up. Really, it should be anywhere it connects, but you know, just just for continuity's sake, maybe. We'll, yeah, I think that's good. We do have a little lake over here, though, so that's something to consider. Um, oh, and there's a pit that goes into it, too. It connects to 63, so we can just call it 63. A, B, C. See? Again, I went back and I scanned up and I saw that there's this underground lake with a little well that looks into it, and we can call that 63C. Piece of cake. All right, so what was our last number that we left off on? I think we were up into the... I'm looking through my layers here on the side. We got the 76. Oh, I got two 76s, don't I? Tisk tisk. 77. So 75, 76, 77. So we're now on 78. So this will be 78. Uh, call this little side path 79 that goes to 49, and then this will be uh, 
we'll call it 81 because I want to call this 82, uh, 83. Oops, I meant to say 80. Eighty one and eighty two. Cool. All right, so seventy, seventy eight, seventy nine, eighty, eighty one, eighty two. Uh, we're going to call this guy eighty three, eighty four. This keeps going this way. There's lots of little side rooms that are living by themselves, so let's give them numbers eighty five. Um, we'll call these this pair A and B, so that'll be B. A will be the easternmost one. Path keeps going and it hits this underground lake, so that's pretty cool. Uh, 87. So 87 connects to 11. Um, I assume that connects. We'll say it does. So if we're confused, we can look at um, Dyson's thing here. Where's that little water source with the dock? Uh, here it is. Yeah, it looks like they're on the same. Uh, it's kind of weird, isn't it? I don't know if they connect or not, or if it's just going over. But there's no dotted lines, so I'm going to assume they do. Um, 87... Call that B, call this A, and then this will be 88. And you can see, look, it's going back in on itself. And then this dead ends over here. Uh, we'll get back to you. Look, we got this passage over here too. Fascinating. Complicated, right? <laughs> so in over the course of doing this, it's likely you'll change it a few different times just because you can see it turns into just kind of this crazy stuff. But we're making pretty good progress. And at the end of the day, it's all just about being creative. Um, I think we can go back and fill out this chunk here. So why don't we do that, and then we'll come back to this long connecting hallway. Actually, why don't we go ahead and finish. We'll go that. You know, we'll, we'll come back to these guys over here. Um, but this will be 87, 8, and A. This guy will be 88. we got this hallway that goes up here. This can be 89. Uh, left wall. So we'll actually call him 90A. Eight. All right, so 89, 90. 91, uh, look, this is all a dead end over here, so 92, 93, hallway, 94, um, look at 94, there's some interesting things over here that we might want to account for, so let's, let's give this alcove a B, call 9, a, call that a C, um, 96, you can see it leads to a secret passage that goes further that way. We'll come back to that section. So we've built all this out and then we'll eventually come back here, which will lead us out. You know, let's go ahead and do it now. Let's go ahead and see what's up. 97, and we'll dead in right there, so it's all kind of in line. 97, 
100. Uh, we'll go 101A. I'll probably need to start using a smaller font because we're in the triple digits now. Uh, B. Uh, two. We can dead end it there. Let's go ahead and give us our 11s again so we know that this is 11. Cool. River's done. Awesome. All right, so that led us to 102. I think I can make that a little bit bigger. Yeah. All right, so we got all this crap. Uh, let's go this way. Uh, where are we at? 103. Can make that probably. 103, 104. Left wall is going to take us up these stairs, which is going to connect back to there, so that's great. 105A, left wall, so B, C, D, um, that connects to there, so 106. Okay, there's one more loose in. We're going to keep on going. Uh, it's going to be a little awkward, but okay. 108. We could put a stroke in on that. That'll make it stand out some. This hallway goes up, left wall, left wall. Those all look like they head that way, so let's... Um, uh, I don't want to do this. We'll come back to that. This has a secret door, so probably want to number that. Um, what do we got up here? More of this cavernous area. Kind of want to keep all the caverns to themselves. So, and I've so far I've more or less done that, except for this like kind of temple area over here with the big great hall. Let's um get them numbered at. Uh, 109, and I can hear my wife coming home now, so she's going to expect me to be in the kitchen. So I might have to leave us here, but hopefully you guys have kind of gotten a sense of kind of a good way to, to number things. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter as long as the information's going to be accurate. You know, when you have a dungeon like this, and this is probably one of the most complicated ones I've ever done, is it's going to have a lot of different paths and sideways, you know, areas that the characters can kind of go through and move through. Um, yeah, I think I think that's good to dead in there. Um, well, we really need to go back and fill this out, so we probably will. Um, yeah, like my rules kind of went out the window. <laughs> with this. So another thing I'll do all the time, and it's terrible, is I'll go back and I'll... Um, delete everything I did and like redo all of it. <laughs> but anyways, guys, I'm going to cut out here and go start making dinner, but hopefully this has been informative. Um, I really look forward to kind of getting this whole thing numbered up. You can see we're probably about little halfway done. Two thirds. So um, pretty cool little map. If you aren't already a fan of Dyson logos, check them out. DysonLogos.blog, and then, like I said, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube. Later.